Hey, how's everybody doing today? Well, I wanted to do the video on SimApp Pro and how it's set up because I've been getting off and on lately. I've been getting quite a few people. I guess they've been buying the Win Wing Top Gun setup and I've been getting questions about how to set it up in the display area, um, what needs to be done, certain things. Probably like five, six people have contacted me regarding this and I figured I'd do a short video explaining exactly how I did it and how I got it set up. So basically the first thing you want to do is open up your browser, go to WinWing, go over to your download center and download SimApp Pro and install it. That'll downsize to the corner of your screen when you're all done. The second thing you want to do is you have to have this program in order for it to run. It's called Display Link. It's made by a company named Synaptics. It won't, it won't function properly with this for some reason. I don't know why. But anyways, you download it, install it. You won't really see much of it. So what you can do is go over to your Windows Store and you can do a search on Display Link Manager. That'll download and install the program. It's a more advanced part of the program. It's a manager program. It will come up on your screen. It looks kind of like this actually. I'll show you right now. So this is what you'll get and then you can go over to your audio video if you want, but you use your video settings because this is more or less for your little displays, your win-wing displays. And it just brings up pretty much your Windows display program and this is how you need to set up the monitors once they're up. Once you have them running and installed and you can see them, you have your main display. You'll set these up right here you'll go into your program and over here you can click on identify and it will bring up what five three and four so when you see how that's set up one's a left one's a center one's a right you put them in that order i know it looks weird there's a five a three and a four strange but that's the way it is so once you get that all installed you're off and running it's, it's pretty good the next big thing is Let's downsize this stuff. I'm gonna downsize this because we really don't need this from here on out. Well, I'll leave it going for now. And um, let's close this out. So you're gonna wanna come over, if you're running Windows 11, it will be on your right hand side of the screen. Click your arrow, double click on your SimApp Pro. And when you open, the first thing you're gonna open is your devices. Someone kept asking me about, they couldn't see it in their key bindings. You don't see it in your key bindings. You'll find it over here in your devices and you can basically click on it. You you want to do a firmware update on everything and when you do your firmware update for the first time do one thing at a time so basically unplug everything and update one display after it's all updated unplug it do the second one do the same thing with the with the hud the panels everything else do one thing at a time and then once it's all running and up and going you can turn everything back on over here to the right side of the screen it'll tell you what a, what's what see you can click on it and it'll tell you switch successfully no, I don't want to bother switching over. You can set up your light, your backlight settings, pretty much everything. So as far as key binding goes, you want to go back to your main screen. And this is one of the questions I kept getting asked was, why aren't I seeing this in my key bindings? You don't. Let's jump back for one second. I want to show you something else real quick. Before you start programming anything, you got to go to your settings and make sure if you're using Steam version of DCS and it's on your hard drive, which is all your SSD, whatever you're using, you're going to go to your C program file in here gives you a drop down so it's C program files x86 steam and then over here for user data it would be your name under the game so you would go users name save games DCS and that's what you would put in there and that's pretty much it if you're using the steam version you'd be over here if you're using the open beta version of I'm not saying the steam version would be here the ED version the regular version would be here the stable version and the open beta is over here you do the exact same thing so it's pretty simple there so once you get that all done you're gonna jump back over here to devices and this is how you test it this is where you see everything so say we go to okay so which one would this be nope okay so that's the right MFD so you can see the light click in that's all you get over there you head back over arrow over go to key bindings and this is someone kept asking me this question why ain't they seeing it if it's not popping up here you normally have to do a restart once you see all of your hardware you just select whatever it is you want and you go over to your dcs and then you're playing and this is what happens so you're at dcs you can bind everything so say i want to do the f15e is there any bindings for that yet yes there's one all assigned 
From here, you click on it and you can download it and run. I've already done it. Haven't even flown the plane yet, but <laughs> already done it. The F-18 is probably the one with the most bindings. So if you went over to say the F-18, you can see where there's a pretty good list. And the way you can tell who's done like the most thorough job of assigning everything would be the amount of people. So this guy's got 513 downloads already. So basically you just click download. It gets over here. I've already assigned all mine by hand, so I'm not going to bother doing it because of me having the PTO too. I kind of had to change everything around a little bit. A lot of my settings work off of that. So what you would do is hit run and it automatically binds everything. Let's take a look at the HUD. F-18 HUD. This guy's always got a lot. 892. 100% correct. You download that version. It pops up over here. You select run. It automatically assigns and binds everything. But don't get me wrong. You do have to go back into your options in the game, your control options, because you will find some over Overlap. So you may find something assigned for the HUD overlapping with the joystick setting or something. So you want to go back and forth and clear a few things out. You won't get much of it, but you can run into some of it. If you have the vibrating set up, the, the uh, I guess it's the F-16 stick with the motion vibration thing there. I don't use that. I just have the regular stick. I, I don't care much for the vibrating stuff. <laughs> Anyways, same deal. DCS find whatever plane you want to assign it to so over here it would be say i don't know what do i use over here the f-18 again and you can set this up this is more in advanced settings so for some reason let me see f-16 that's more advanced settings stuff so that's basically a rundown on it the main things you want to look at is devices it'll tell you what is working see bright switches all of it's right there. If you look over to the right hand side, you can see a little keypad. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, everything's all working over there. You can see the access there. This is more of a button there. And it also has down the lower part. I, I was a little confused when I first seen the lower part right there. That's for the top. At the top, you have some extra buttons that you can use for assigning things. So basically like that. I have my auto start on there. I just reach up and click click it's all set so real quick once over again this is where you check your devices to make sure all your buttons are working pto so you can see how everything's all good over there up down center all the way back up pretty simple to use just remember each each piece of hardware firmware update do just that one piece put your usb on power it in if you're going to use usb hubs it's more recommended to go directly into the back of your computer but i can imagine like with me went out and i bought a really good hub so you want to get a really good usb powered usb hub so you got that power cable running from the wall here's your firmware updates if you're looking over here this tells you the newest firmware version hardware version you want to look down here this will tell you what you have see mine is up to date it says latest current it's pretty much the same on all of them key binding that's where you do all your key binding this right here like i said if you have the motion set up for your joystick this is where you're going to work on that stuff virtual mapping i've never even used that displays and this is the tricky thing with this every time and i went crazy when i first got this set up because i just couldn't get it to stay working till i finally contacted someone on youtube that helped me out and got back to me and they told me and i don't know why this is win wing should really fix this because it doesn't even make any sense every time you start a game if you shut your computer down restart up start another game you have to go through every setting click 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 go all the way down and then you select it and hit apply Select it, hit apply. You shut your computer off, come back an hour later. Believe it or not, you got to do the same thing again. Why? I, it just doesn't even make sense. There's no memory that stores it away. I, I don't know what it is, but it really needs to be fixed. So that's the basic setup on it. This is how it should look. That's the sequence and how you should do it. Synap Pro program installed. Display manager, go to that synaptic, download that. And even one step I forgot to say, one thing even better, if you, like I said, if well, I don't think I forgot to say it. If you want more control, you can go to Windows, the Windows store, and you can download this again and it allows you to use all your settings. It just brings it all up. It's more advanced version video settings see what i'm saying it just brings it back and allows you to be able to because you have to take those three little monitors and select your main monitor and place them in order underneath for it to be all lined up right it's like an extension you're just basically extending your screen you want to identify them it does the same thing as in the other 
in the Windows app. Just tells you what's what, one and two. You can click over here on the monitor. See, it tells you the monitor. You can set it up. There's the basic resolution, 768 by 1024. More than likely, when you restart the computer, a lot of times, these little displays, they're going to be in landscape. Just come over here, open it up, and click portrait. Watch what happens. So... I'm not going to keep the changes, but that would go into landscape. I'm going to revert back. So basically, if you have a plane on your screen like I have, it's going to be pointing up and down instead of going across. You can also adjust the brightness and the contrast from in there. You want to make sure everything's on extended. And that's pretty much it. I know I was all over the place a little bit. It's my first time ever doing this type of video. But if you follow those directions, you should be all set. So I hope this video helps someone out. Always my pleasure. If you did enjoy the video, if it did help you out, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date on some of the things that I'm doing, subscribe. Okay, I got to get going. Hope this helped out. Everybody stay safe. Peace out.